Welcome, welcome, welcome to a, another episode of Biohacking with Brittany. I am honored to have you listening. I know there are so many different podcasts out there that you could be listening to right now, and you've chosen to spend your time with me, and I really appreciate that. And yeah, this is a place where I share my health journey and wellness, favorite things that I'm doing, and biohacks and all sorts of things along the way. So I really appreciate it. And I've actually been just recently looking at my podcast metrics, and they've been doing really well lately, which is super interesting because I actually started this podcast in 2019 and then it took off about six months while I was building out my business in 2020 and then kind of came back and it's been slowly, slowly growing. It took me quite a while to figure out the style that I liked and what I wanted to say and who I wanted to have on, but now I'm really gaining momentum. I think I'm hitting about a thousand downloads a week right now, which is awesome and might sound small compared to people like Ben Greenfield or whoever. But when you have your own little podcast that you've been like chipping away at for a couple of years and then it starts to pick up speed, it's like really nice to see. So I really appreciate you listening and being here. And thank you for all the reviews lately too. I have really been asking for reviews and it's awesome to kind of like see that work out and see people really respond to that. So I just got one yesterday and it said, awesome pod. Brittany and her guests cover the best tips, tricks, and advice for biohacking your health and wellness in this can't miss podcast. All the tips are actionable and easy to implement into your life to reach optimal health. And that is from Brooke Craven from the US. So thank you. Thank you for submitting your review. I I definitely appreciate that. I am coming off of Easter weekend right now, and I had my family visit from out of town, and I actually went dress shopping for my wedding that I'm having in Costa Rica in March next year. And it was interesting because I wasn't super excited to go dress shopping for a handful of reasons. And when I went... I went to a couple different stores and I brought three people with me and it was honestly very overwhelming. And I think there were a couple of reasons, but I think it was like in relation to health and wellness, it was very confronting in terms of how I feel about myself and my body image and potentially having like body dysmorphia. And so when you're kind of trying on these like extravagant gowns and you're showing people And it's so confronting because all everyone is just staring at your body and staring at you wearing this dress and this material and, oh, this looks good. This doesn't look good. And everyone has their comments. And so it was honestly quite hard. And I thought it was going to be hard and I knew it would be challenging, but I really didn't actually enjoy the process that much. So it made me realize like how deep my body image slash body dysmorphia might be and how long it's kind of been brewing for. And I haven't really done a full episode on this and I haven't really discussed this in length because I'm very much like coming to terms with it. And I don't feel like I'm fully versed in it or an expert in it or can really speak to it other than my own experience. So it doesn't mean I shouldn't talk about it, but I I might at one point but it was very confronting. And so if anyone else has felt like that, let me know. And if you have felt like that, just understand that you're not the only person. And if you feel like that, whenever you try on clothes or whenever you buy something or whenever you take photos, like girl or boy, same. (laughs) Uh, I think it's more common than we think. And I, I get it. And I understand where you're coming from. So just know that my thoughts are with you and I understand how hard it is. And it's yeah, it's something that I'm going to work on and probably discuss more in length because I just don't think that there's that many people who are super honest about it. There's one thing to talk about like positive body image, but I think it's a different thing to talk about the struggles that you might feel in how you view yourself versus how other people view you, right? 
how you start, if you start changing things for yourself, how you become obsessed and you start nitpicking on things and it just kind of takes over. Actually, and the other day I was in a clinic for a skincare appointment and the doctor actually said something like this. And it was very much like, once you go down the, the, the hole of, you know, Botox or Xeomin or filler or whatever, the more and more you look at your skin and the more and more you look at your face, you see more things that you want to change, right? So then you get your eyebrows down, done and your lips done. And it's like this whole thing. Whereas if you kind of just avoid that, then you don't become so nitpicky and obsessed with fixing every little thing. And yeah, it's hard. And I just feel that. I just feel that so entirely. And there's so many reasons that I'm not going to get into now as to what got me to this point. But I know that things need to change in order for me to have better mental health and better body image and a better understanding of if I have body dysmorphia and like what, what that means and how to cope with that. And does that mean I'm going to have that for the rest of my life? And it's something that I just have to watch for because it's a disorder or is that something that you can get over and move past if your mental health is in a better space? I don't know. So I'm doing a lot of exploring and taking it one step at a time. Yeah. So that was just my little like tangent on my weekend, but this episode's really cool. We dive into listening to your own voice and how therapeutic that is. This is interesting because as a podcaster, I have obviously listened to my own voice on my podcast, but I have an editor now who does my podcast and I don't actually like listening to my episodes. It kind of makes me cringe and it kind of just makes me feel weird. And I actually talked about that on the podcast, but basically with the company that, that I interview, you create like therapeutic tracks with music and you listen to them and they're very healing. So I have one that is my own voice that I listen to. And you're like saying these very gentle things, these very loving things. And it is very therapeutic and it resets the nervous system and it kind of trains you to get back into that, oh, everything's okay because I can hear myself when I was okay, right? And we get into the science of it and dig more into this, but it's very, very fascinating. And the company is called Way, just W-A, W-A-Y, and it's very fascinating. So take a listen. I'm not going to include a snippet of my own track because it wouldn't have the same effect. If you heard my voice, it's not going to be therapeutic. Whereas if you record a track with them and hear your own voice, it will be right. So that's kind of the whole premise. So definitely check them out and I will link to them in the show notes. We have a discount code biohacking, Brittany in all capitals, and you can use that to get a percentage off. And just a reminder, if you don't know, if you go to my website, I have a shop page And this is where I have all of the products and services that I affiliate for. So a lot of people were asking for this over the last couple of years. And so I finally put it together. So if you hear any ads or see anything on Instagram, that is like the collective of where everything is. And you can come back to this at any time. Maybe you have a birthday list. Maybe you have a Christmas list. Maybe you want to buy something for someone else, whatever. That is where all my wellness and biohacking products are. And it's just going to keep growing because I just keep meeting new brands, working with new people. It's great. So always come back to there and always think if I'm going to buy a wellness product or a biohacking product, does Brittany have a discount code? Because there's a very high chance that I do, Um, especially if it's a biohacking product, like especially so I don't want you paying full price if you don't need to. Sometimes I get a kickback. Most of the time I don't. So it's really not super, not a big deal for me, but it's more of a big deal for you. So always use that. And yeah, so speaking of, a shout out to this week's sponsor, Inside Tracker. I love working with Inside Tracker and I've been working with them for quite a long time. And I always get tested through them. They come to your door, they do 43 biomarkers, they do your inner age, which is your biological age, 
and you can kind of see all your results. It's it's fantastic. It's way more in depth than going through your doctor. There's recommendations there. You get your results and it shows you optimal range, not necessarily normal range of where you should be, which I love. And I also think the biological age thing is so fascinating and so helpful because obviously you can't do that through your doctor and they would probably look at you like you're crazy if you were to say something like that. So my biological age was actually a bit higher this last time I tested. And that's definitely because of the lack of proper nutrition in the last little bit for myself. Uh, And that's okay. Life has its seasons. But yeah, so check them out and enjoy this episode. And again, thank you for listening. And I look forward to having you next week. Welcome to another episode of Biohacking with Brittany. I am so excited that you are joining me this week again for a new topic that I like to dive into, whether it's wellness or biohacking or nutrition focus. It's kind of all encompassing health topics these days. And today is a very cool episode because this is another modality, we'll say, that I have not tried before until really reaching out and talking with my guest. So I have Jane Jordan, who is joining me on the show. She is the co-founder and CEO of Way. And Way creates therapeutic audio tracks in your own voice, customized to you and your needs, whether that's reducing anxiety or helping with productivity or helping with stress. It's basically like you kind of talking to yourself. So we're going to dive into it and explain it way better than I just did. But Jane, welcome to the show. Thanks, Brittany. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no worries. So how did you get started with this idea? Like, where did this come from? Because I have never heard of anyone doing this before we got connected. Yeah. So where to start? My husband and I got married on March 11th, 2020, which if you remember was basically the week the world shut down with the pandemic. And we left New York, which was our home at the time and went into isolation with everyone else. And it was a really challenging couple months for us that I would say that first six months was really, really hard for us and for everyone. And we were interested in trying to utilize some of the techniques that we had been learning over uh, the course of our adult life. We were having trouble during that time regulating ourselves. We were having (laughs) tons of anxiety, a lot of overwhelm. We had a therapist at the time, but that was, if you remember, like that was the time everyone jumped into therapy and therapists were stretched really thin and your therapist isn't always available. And so we wanted an experience where we could listen and use some of the techniques that we had experienced in therapy or other um, healing modalities. And so we initially created these tracks for each other. So I created tracks for Matt and my voice. um, And his tracks were all around helping him process his anger and sadness, which was harder for him to tap into. And he made tracks for me that were focused on helping me to regulate my nervous system and helping me with my fears and insecurities. Um, And they worked really well. We incorporated all of these evidence-based techniques um, to regulate yourself. And they worked great, except for when we were in conflict. (laughs) And then like being newly married, we were experiencing our our share of conflict. And our tracks, I don't want to listen to his voice and he didn't want to listen to my voice. And so we tried out listening to our own when we were trying to regulate during uh, times of conflict. And what happened was this incredible experience of hearing yourself in an empowered state and being able to orient yourself to a a version of you that is balanced when you're feeling so dysregulated. So when you're feeling like it's, you know, called different things, different labels, like when you're feeling flooded or when you're spiraling in an emotion, being able to take a cue from yourself and reference a balanced state. And so from there, it was just self research and like experimentation that we did over the course of a few months. And the more that it was working for us, the more excited we got about the potential that it could help other people. And so we started trialing it with some friends and a therapist and psychiatrist to test the effectiveness of the tracks. And then we actually stumbled on this incredible research a couple months in, which was this research that was done with a group and participants' voices 
were modulated to different emotions without them knowing. So they would hear their voice and it would be slightly altered to be angry or fearful or happy. And then they would know what the emotion they were feeling based on hearing their voice. And again, they don't know that their voice is being manipulated. And then they would note that that was the emotion that they were feeling, which was this really profound discovery and the potential of self-regulation through hearing your own voice and that when you hear your voice in a balanced calm state that you actually orient to that and feel that so that was the beginning and and really it was just us <laughs> trying to trying to find something that would work for us and and then it grew yeah that's really cool i think yeah there's just so much there to unpack and it's just so interesting so like i i made a way track when i was listening to it today and then again right before this episode. And it's so beautiful. And it's Mm -hmm. so weird to say that because, so I have a podcast and I like hear myself speak and half the time just want to cringe. Yeah, (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah, Yeah. Because it's just brutal sometimes, but it was so different. Like it was such a different experience than I thought it was going to be. I thought like it was just very grounding. Like it was very grounding. Yeah, I love that. And there's some research. I mean, one of the most common objections to our product is you and I both feel and everyone else feels, which is when you hear your voice that you want to cringe. And it's just such an uncomfortable experience. But what we've seen with some of the research that's been done around hearing your own voice is that it actually, in fact, does sound different than how it sounds resonating in your head. So it's just kind of jarring the first time you hear it because it sounds very different than the voice you hear as you're moving about the world and speaking. But they've also seen with research that the more that you listen to your voice, you actually can grow to have a preference to your voice, which is just a really cool idea of just like having this tool that could be really effective and that you actually, that maybe if it's it's a little uncomfortable at first, that it will actually over time be more comfortable and um, you might even grow to prefer it. But yeah, it's, we've focused a lot on trying to make that experience it, as you said, beautiful and enjoyable and, and effective. And we incorporate really beautiful moving music as well so that your voice is layered with this incredible music and framed in a certain way with the script that is so grounding. So that's awesome. Mm-hmm. That was your experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love the music that, that went along with it. And so just so people know how it works is you identify an area, I guess, that needs support. And I think the one that I sent you might've been stress management. I think that's what I said. And then you kind of create a script for the person and then we read it and then you take the audio, clip it and add music to it and kind of make this like finished product with it. Is that kind of how you would describe it? Yeah. So you would do a discovery intake where that discovery intake is going to help us to customize your tracks. And then we have different frameworks for different needs and goals, whether that is reducing your anxiety or regulating stress or increasing your confidence. And so we have these this framework of scripts that has the best evidence-based techniques, but then based on your discovery intake, we customize that even further. And then you record that script, as you said, and then we take that recording, layer it with music and make this really beautiful experience that you can utilize anytime that you need support. Yeah. I was really impressed with it too, because like you, on the link you sent me, there's like three different audio tracks. The first one says like, welcome in. The second one is gratitude. And the third one is daily tuning. And so it's interesting listening to them and how they're each kind of different, but how you still feel that sense of like relief from all of them. And it's just such an interesting concept that you're just listening to yourself say these words and you know, you previously recorded this, you know, what you previously said and maybe how you even felt when you were recording it and you kind of, those feelings can come up. Right. But then you still, it still like evokes that response of like, oh, I feel really like at home and grounded with myself right now. And yeah, I'm, I just didn't experience like expect to experience that. So is that kind of like the feedback that you get from everybody who uses your product? Yeah, it is, which has been, we're super excited about, but it's, 
It's been a lot of work to get that right and make sure that you create a safe space for someone because it is very confronting hearing your own voice. And I think you were alluding to this, but it's like you do hear a lot of what's going on in in your emotion through hearing your voice. Like you can hear layers of vulnerability and anxiety or, or confidence or whatever it is. But we've worked a lot on being super intentional on making that experience positive for someone. So the welcome in track is really introducing yourself to your voice and that that can be a really beautiful experience when framed correctly. And a lot of it, there's, it's all of these beautiful evidence-based techniques, again, that, that serve these different needs and goals. But the through line through all of it is really self-compassion and self-love, which does create that sense of grounding and should not be discounted. Like I think sometimes self-love and like self-compassion can be very like flowery terms. In fact, those things can be really effective in regulating ourselves, which is then bleeds into every part of our health, which you talk about so much. Um, it's if we're feeling dysregulated and having a ton of anxiety, our immune system is not going to support us as much. And we're potentially at risk of getting sick or developing disease and a snowball from there, or it just then creates havoc in our life. And then our quality of life isn't as good. So those things are really important. And when, when we create the tracks, like we really want to anchor to those things to um, make sure that people feel held in that experience. And again, music is such a powerful, powerful component of that because music is so emotional. And so we really see the product as both your voice coupled with music to help have this really held experience. Yeah, I, I do definitely agree with that. And I've experienced a lot of relief through music before, whether it's like a calming playlist or even like binaural beats, I, I find really help me focus when I'm working or sleep at night, like these different things. So it's cool to kind of take that to the next level and add your own voice, I think. Yeah. And that's, that's my husband and my background is in music. So I got my degree in vocal performance. So I was always deeply connected to the voice and just the self-soothing capabilities of the voice. And that's how I really learned how to self-soothe when I was little was I would sing and I would talk to myself and, and that was always really a, a comforting experience. And so, yeah, way is just kind of an evolution of that. That's so interesting. Cause yeah, when you were describing it at the beginning, I was thinking about the history of this type of modality, right? So like a lot of people I interview come on and, and they've created some sort of product or whatever, but it's actually rooted in like some sort of modality or, or way to be healthier that's been around for a very long time, but they've put a new spin on it or made it modern or whatever. So I'm like wondering with this a long time ago, I don't, I don't know when, but were people somehow kind of taking the same concept and just using it in a different way? Yeah, well, we know through through lineages of healers that music and the voice was used in ceremony, was used in therapeutic modalities to help people to move through emotions. So it's definitely, it's just building on this beautiful lineage and foundation of what's always been there, which is that the voice has such soothing power. So incredible then to also see the development of technology in a way that we can record the voice and create this really beautiful experience of hearing your own voice and the quality is really high and, and that that's yeah building on what we've seen with music for ages and ages. Yeah, that's yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's interesting. I was actually talking to my partner like a while ago and we were talking about music and when I listen to music, like I know all the lyrics to all the songs. Like I just <laughs> without even trying, like my brain just memorizes them. And like when we do like trivia nights or something, I always can finish the lyrical line of like classic songs, let's say, but he like listens to the beats and like the actual music part. So he never remembers lyrics, but he's so like, he was a drummer as a kid. So he's so entrenched in the actual instruments versus the voice, which is just so crazy. 
That is so funny, Brittany, because my husband are the exact same way. Wow. <laughs> like, <laughs> like all their music and I can repeat the lyrics back and like pretty quickly memorize them. And I find such deep connection to the lyrics, whereas he was a music producer in his early 20s. And so he's just hearing layers of beats and it's the same exact thing. But it, it raises an interesting point with just memorizing lyrics because with the tracks, like that's been something that's been really fascinating with people who have utilized them regularly is that it becomes this script in your mind that you're familiar with. So then when you're in a moment of dysregulation or when you're feeling anxiety or overwhelm, it's like you have this quote unquote song in your head (laughs) that has these techniques on loop and can help you be guided through that experience. And so it's really interesting because I have experienced that with the tracks of being able to reference like certain techniques in the tracks outside of even listening to them because of the familiarity of them. I love that. I love that. And that makes sense, right? If you naturally memorize lyrics, you're going to do the same thing with this. So how often do you recommend that people listen to their track? I recommend every day only in that it's checking in with yourself is really important every day. And that's just essentially what way is, is checking in with yourself and bringing yourself back to a balanced place. And there's just been so much research with meditation and some of these other techniques that having a regular practice of, of them is really helpful in making them more effective. So I suggest every day, but our tracks range in length from anywhere from five minutes to 25 minutes or even sometimes longer. And so it can be, I use my daily tuning track every day and that's just a chance for me to check in with myself. Then there's other tracks that there's a track called Emotions SOS. And that's really your track for when, you know, like shit is sitting the fan (laughs) and you're having anxiety or you're spiraling or whatever is going on. And you really just need something to help you with like the overwhelm and intensity. And that can be used as needed. That doesn't need to be used every day, although it can. So yeah, I, I would recommend every day. And again, just the familiarity of your voice and hearing these things every day. It's like, what we hear every day is just a lot of self-criticism in our head, Mm. right? Yeah. We are hearing all of these self-critical thoughts or we're hearing media or we're taking in the world and it's intense, but being able to have something that you hear every day that's healthy for you and will ground you then helps you to just maintain that over, you know, day to day. I love that. Yeah. I, I, I love that. I want to, I think I'm going to do mine in the morning. Like it's on my computer. So I'll just like, I saved it. I bookmarked uh, the page. So kind of just like starting my day with it would be really nice. And I think it also just like invokes like a lot of confidence in yourself, right? Like you said, like you're, you're kind of just hearing yourself from a different perspective that you don't normally hear in your day-to-day life. So you, I guess you can see like, or hear what other people hear when they hear you, if that makes sense, you know, like, yeah, a hundred percent. We're always so good at giving advice to friends or being compassionate towards friends mm. when they're, when they're going yeah. through something and it's much harder to do that with yourself. But yeah, empowerment is such a big piece of this because my journey, and I'd love to hear about your journey of managing things like anxiety and overwhelm, but it's really disempowering to only rely on other people. And again, like I'm a huge believer in therapy and I, and meditation and these other experiences where you're being guided by someone else. I think these are really powerful. Um, and I think that you should be able to support yourself on your own. And that's really where I have found the most empowerment and where a lot of our clients have found empowerment is being able to say, oh, I'm going through this thing. It's really challenging. My therapist isn't available. My partner's not available. It's 11 PM and I'm having a panic attack and I can support myself through that. I have the tools to do that. And so that's been a huge piece is just trying to give people more empowerment through their own voice with their mental health. Mm -hmm. So when you listen to your track, do you just sit there and just listen or can you listen to it while you're like on a walk or like doing dishes? What do you recommend? Yeah, all of the above. So it it just varies. Like sometimes I like to just sit down and check in with myself and just be really still. Other times I really love to take it out in nature with me and have it on my phone. But there people have 
listen to the tracks in all different settings. Like we've had some people who have listened to them on their commute home. People have listened to it like before a date. So on their way to a date, they'll listen to a track Aww. to just calm themselves down. Yeah. And we've all been there. Like we know what yeah. that is like. And yeah. it would be so nice to have something to listen to, to like be your pep talk and ground you before you go into that experience. But it just really, it really depends. Like we always encourage, let your lifestyle inform how and when you use your tracks. So like you said, if you want to use it in a morning practice of just starting your day on the right foot and in a grounded place, then that's an awesome way to listen. If it would be better for you to have it on the go and and you're really busy and you need it on your commute, then definitely listen to it. We Anywhere where we would encourage you to close your eyes, it's just something that you're invited to do if that's available to you. So it's not something like meditation where you need to be still, eyes closed, silent. Like we really encourage it to be used like music would be used. Mm, Okay. Okay. I love that. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. So do you think that over time you would want to update your track? Like I just think about how your voice kind of changes as you get older and would it get to a point where you're listening to yourself and you're like, okay, like this was from three years ago. Maybe I need to update this because I don't identify with that voice anymore. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. So there is definitely the option of adding tracks to your pack. And we encourage people to add tracks to your pack because if you create tracks in a certain time of your life and you customize them to that time, that, like you said, that you might grow out of that, that might Mm. change, your needs might change. And so we definitely encourage, yes, to create new ones as you go. And there's also something about hearing yourself from a different time. I still listen to tracks that I made, I, I think over a year ago. And there's something about hearing them and the familiarity of them that is just mm-hmm. so grounding to me, but definitely encourage people to, for the content of the tracks to evolve and grow as you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was even thinking like, I know you just started in 2020, but like 10 years from now, listening to a track you make now, I almost feel like it would be like nostalgic listening to it. Like this was a time and like, <laughs> listen to me. I'm so proud of myself. Like blah, blah, blah. Right. Like I remember this, like, yeah. Yeah. It's been really fascinating. So we actually launched in November, 2021. So even mm-hmm. more recently, we've been developing the product since 2020, but yeah, it's something for us. that's just, there's so much exciting potential there of being able to have this time capsule of your voice and your growth. And again, I, I'm so sensitive to the voice, but we all are if we if we set the intention to be. And you can hear so much in hearing your own voice. And so it's really exciting that could be there as the product develops over the next years. How can you tell if your healthy and not so healthy decisions are impacting your health on a cellular level or even impacting your biological age? Feeling better is one thing and having symptoms get better is one thing, but there's something completely different about having the data and the numbers behind it. This can be very helpful for both your short-term and your long-term goals. We need to be testing ourselves regularly so we know where we stand, whether it's testing our vitamin levels, cholesterol, blood sugar, whatever it is, the proof is in the data. It can be such a pain to get tested through our doctors and our clinics. And when we do these tests, often they don't even give us all the biomarkers that we ask for. That's why I love at-home tests. I find it super interesting to get my biological age test specifically because it indicates how all of my decisions are impacting me. Your biological age is a representation of your health conditions and a predictor of how soon you can exhibit chronic conditions of late life. This is obviously compared to our chronological age, which is just the amount of time that has passed since we were born. When I first got tested last year, my results said I was 19.7 years old. And the second time I was tested, it said I was 18 years old and I was 27 at the time. I recently got my biological age tested again through Inside Tracker's inner age test. And this time it said I was 22 years old and I'm now 28. My age actually went up. <laughs> and this is likely because my HbA1c levels were higher after spending 10 days in Costa Rica recently, where I had a ton of cocktails and fruit and carbs, and also just eating more carbs and processed food in the last few months. 
The great thing about Inside Tracker's Inner Age Test is that it actually shows you which specific biomarkers are making you older or making you younger. And it identified that my HbA1c needs to come down because it's actually making me older on a cellular level, which is so helpful to know and know what I need to be doing next. Knowing your age can help you make these changes and help you just really make smarter decisions and be more informed moving forward. I always get tested through Inside Tracker, and you can as well, and use my discount code at checkout, which is Biohacking Brittany in all capitals. It's linked on my website underneath my shop, and it'll be on my show notes as well. Yeah, I love that. I love that. So I know kind of just shifting gears here, but I know that yeah. you are not on social media, which is <laughs> very interesting. So like, w- yes. w- tell me about that. What? Why did you make that decision? Yeah, I am personally not on social media. And then we as a company are not on social media. It was the middle of the pandemic. Again, I mean, really right around the same time that we were creating Way together, my husband and I were going on social media and just realizing that every time that we did, it made us feel worse than better. And so it just became this pattern that we weren't really stoked about. And so we both personally got off social media and I've never looked back. Like it's something that I feel is of course, something that has connected us all in a really beautiful way and can be quite distracting. And so I think it takes a level of discipline in someone to be able to engage with that platform and not be dysregulated on a regular basis. So for us, it was just the right choice. And then when we started developing Way and made that decision with the company, it was really about honoring this space that we were creating for people that was a safe, held, autonomous space, private, for them to process and be with themselves. And social media, for better or for worse, creates an experience where we're connected outwards. And so it was really just about honoring our mission and honoring the space that we were trying to create for people. Way is a very separate experience from social media. And sometimes I'll even go on YouTube or or Pinterest or something. And it's just the overwhelm of like how bombarded I am by what's being fed to me is just so intense. And we really want our product and our experience to be the opposite of that. We want you to be able to come into your profile, play one of your tracks, and then it be just the most blissful, calm, balanced experience you could possibly imagine. No, I really respect that. And not a lot of companies are doing that now, right? Everything is about marketing your business on social media and this is how you get customers and blah 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 but yeah and we yeah and to clarify we have marketed on social media and that is has been a point of tension for us and we would prefer to definitely align with our uh, clients in other ways that feel more authentic but for better or for worse that's where they are and we did about a hundred interviews when we were doing our research and development and it was consistently the same piece of feedback which was Social media gives me the most anxiety of anything, basically. And that's where I find all of my new products and things that are helpful for me. And so it's been this (laughs) tension of like, how do we engage with our audience where they are and be able to offer them something that's better than that experience? And also then when they begin interacting with Way, that it's a very separate experience that we're not calling people to spend time on social media, which I think a lot of companies just like, it's this thing of like pinging their clients to use the product and be on the product. And we're not building our business model in a way where we profit from your time constantly on the product. And so it's a tricky one. It's super tricky, but it's something that hopefully we can completely eradicate from our company and is just not something that we feel aligned with. And is how, how do you feel on social media? What's your experience been? Yeah, probably pretty similar. Like a lot of my majority of my business comes from social media, whether that's like clients one-on-one or content creation for other brands and businesses. And so it's hard to distance yourself when it's basically the driving force behind your business. Right. And a lot of people, a lot of people have that, like a lot of people, their whole business is based off of like their Instagram profile or they're on TikTok, whatever it is. And so it's definitely tough. And I've had periods where I've taken breaks and 
because I've been worn out from it and it's overwhelming. And it used to be like, I think a few years ago, it used to kind of be this narrative of comparison syndrome where like you're seeing what everyone else is doing and then you feel bad because you're not doing well enough compared to them in your head and, and that type of thing. But now it's kind of like the bombardment of notifications that I have all of the time I, is really where I struggle with. And so I have like no notifications on my phone for social media at all. Like I have to go and open the app to see what's going on. I don't, if you DM me, if you do whatever, I don't get notified. And when I see people who have their social media notifications turned on and Mm -hmm. they just get pinged (laughs) every, like multiple times an hour because this person commented or whatever, I'm like, how are you ever going to be present in your life if you're constantly being pulled back into these apps and into your phone? Like, so I know. And, and that's the, it's just such a journey with the way that technology is evolving. It's like, there's such good there and there's such bad and it's, yeah, it's, we're going to have to constantly be figuring that out as it keeps going. Cause it's definitely continuing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rapidly. Yeah. You have to become very conscious of yeah. how you're using the platforms, your habits, and like really what are you getting from them, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. totally. But it's it takes a, a level of understanding that and knowing that. And I, I just fear for the new generations coming up who are like on social media from like the age of 10 or even younger. Like the, like the other day I heard that the average age of a TikTok user is 11. That's so wild. That's wild. What do you mean you're 11 and you're on your phone making videos? Like, no, go play outside. (laughs) Yeah, a hundred percent. And that was another big thing was just trying to make a product that's really accessible for all ages. And with, with some of the meditation apps and some of the mental health apps that are available, they are really inaccessible for younger kids. Mm. It's something that listening to a 40-year-old man lead you through a meditation is not that (laughs) soothing as an 11-year-old. And so we haven't actually um, worked yet with kids, but that's an area where we're really excited about. But in general, like it's been really cool to see that our product spans all ages, all genders, all demographics, because it becomes you. The product becomes you when you uh, create your tracks. And so that's been really exciting to see the potential of something that a lot of people can resonate with and isn't limited to just a small group. Yeah, I I agree. I think it'd be really cool to get this in the hands of kids or even like a school program where the whole class does it, or I don't know, yes, something like yeah. that. Just I've to- had a lot of parents <laughs> who yeah. have said like, I really want to offer this to my kids and we're exploring that right now. So that'll be exciting to see where that goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I love that. And I wish that I had a track that I recorded when I was like seven that I could listen to <laughs> now. Like that right? would be so cool. And Mm-hmm. Like what a like beautiful way to connect to your former self. I just love that. But yeah, this is amazing. Thank you so much for coming on. And yeah, if people, thanks, yeah, if people want to try out a track for themselves, how can they connect with you and do that? Yes. Yeah, so they can find us at experienceway.com. So the word experience and then W-A-Y.com. Um, and there you'll be able to see all the tracks and packs that we offer. Amazing. And I will put the link in the show notes and on my blog and everywhere else so people can easily find you. Thanks, Brittany. This has been so fun. Thanks for listening to another episode of Biohacking with Brittany. If you're interested in finding the show notes or the sponsors for this episode, you can do so on my website, which is biohackingbrittany.com. Remember to follow me on Instagram where I'm most active. My handle is at biohackingbrittany. And if you're interested in working together and you want to email me directly, you can do that. My email is info at biohackingbrittany.com. And I look forward to hearing from you and having you tune in next week.